Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, application engineer here at Saratech. Today I'm going to be talking about super elements inside of FEMAP. So the way of creating a super element inside of FEMAP, you would be in your analysis at manager under master request and conditions, you have external super element creation. And this is where you create a super element. If you needed to reference a super element, it's under analysis set manager options, external super element reference. And this is where you would reference the super element that already exists. So let's go ahead and run through that inside of FEMAP. So here I have a, a simple model that I'm working with and it's comprised of two components and one of these I'm gonna use as a super element. I'm just gonna use this external uh, location over here as our super element. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group it, right click on a property, in this case group. This is an easy way uh, to help group this object. I'm gonna right click add related entities and that will bring along you know, uh, nodes, properties, etc. with it. To do super elements, you need to create a thing called an A set. So I'm going to say group, create manage. I'm going to create a new group. And I'm just going to call this one an A set. Now, inside uh, the A set, I need to add a stack of nodes. And I can say group node ID. Now, in my case, I know at the interface they're ID 10 through 19. And I can manually type them in. And there you can see them uh, at this interface. Go ahead and show the property and these are the same nodes that are here if you wanted to you can turn on you know labels and verify their ids and mine 10 11 12 13 you know as all the way around to here to 19. so it makes sense to help label those nodes for your a set now you also have to create a uh, item it you would define it under your constraint for your a set so i'm going to right click constraint new and i'm going to call this the a set Inside the A set, grab the nodes that we defined for our A set using the group will make it easier to select. And now let's go ahead and constrain those in all six degrees of freedom. So now you have uh, the A set uh, set up. Let's go ahead and create a model for generating a super element. So to do that, you would just right click on analysis, manage. And from here, you would select new you would run a normal modes analysis. Now we're not actually running a normal modes analysis, but we are setting it up so that we can generate the super element. Just gonna go ahead and call this super element creation. And then what we want to do is double check our boundary conditions. We don't want to have a constraint. There we go, let's turn that off. And under the A set right here, we need to make sure that we define the A set. Now, this model has all these other elements in it that I'm not using. So in this case, it would make sense to change this option right here, portion of model to right. And let's go ahead and grab that property uh, group that we set up and make sure that you added those related entities to grab all the associative uh, information as well. Okay. Under external super element creation, we would have to select here and hit edit. And this is where you can create your external super element. Now, since I'm only going to do a normal modes analysis, I'm just going to grab stiffness and mass in this case. And right down here, you see I have a master of an A set. That's great. Make sure it's linked to the A set you created and give your external super element an ID. And I'm just going to call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. You can copy that in case you think you forget it. But so now I'm going to create an external super element with an ID of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's going to be written out in the dmake punch output type. I'm going to go ahead and hit solve, and then go ahead and creating that super element. And in my case, the small model doesn't take very long. You'll notice it doesn't really give me results, but it has ran through uh, my solution. Now, if I look at the location where my my file was saved, you notice that it does give me this punch output, which I can view. And you'll see that it creates my super element one, two, three, four, five. I have my boundary grids for the A set. It lists my A set, and then it lists me uh, my D makes uh, matrices. Okay. So now that I have um, my super element created, let's go ahead and use. Uh, that super element. So in this case, I can go ahead and uh, show my full model again. And since I'm no longer 
using this portion, I can delete it. But before, let's go ahead and merge uh, these notes together. So I can do a tools check, instant notes. Make sure that um, your A set notes match your residing structure. So that's why I'm merging it quickly. And I would like to keep the lower ID. There we go. Okay, so now those notes are merged, and we'll double check that in a moment. I'm just going to delete model mesh because this is going to be a super element, and we're going to and we're just going to call it. Okay, we're not really going to use them. Now I want to make sure that uh, my A set nodes are the correct numbers, so I can turn on these labels, and you see 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way through 19. So that's that's great. So I have the same uh, IDs at that location. So now we created our super element. Let's go ahead and reference the super element. So in our analysis, we're just going to right click, say manage. And from here, we're just going to go ahead and create a new solution. We're going to do normal modes eigenvalue again, uh, because that's the solution type that we're trying to solve. And we'll just call this, um, you know, using um, external super element. Okay. From here, um, Go go ahead and hit OK, and let's check our boundary conditions quickly. Now we want to make sure that we have a constrained model, so we're just doing a constrained normal modes analysis. So from here, let's go ahead and reference the super element. So under Options, External Super Element Reference, we'll go ahead and find our super element punch file. There's our punch file. We're going to call it. And it's super element ID, as you remember, was one, two, three, four, five. It's a punch file, and the matrices inside there were stiffness and mass. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that stiffness and mass information. So now we have called our external super element. Right, so now we can go ahead and solve this model. So now we have our modal analysis using that super element. Now, I also have a model that I ran uh, beforehand of just the entire model uh, set up with a constrained normal modes analysis. And you'll see that the first mode is 29 hertz, and mode 10 is 169.7 uh, in both cases. So we get an accurate representation of both these models. Uh, together. So this is a model solve that was just um, as one. So this is the entire object. And this is the same model, um, grab the right mode, um, that is solved with, with, with using a super element. Okay. So we get an accurate representation of the, the mode onto the residing structure. Now just a quick recap for creating the super element. You would go under your master request and conditions, external super element creation, edit, and you would define your super element information. When you are referencing a super element, you would go under your options, external super element reference, and you would reference the super element that you already have. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.